Well, Bill, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I've been looking forward to having this conversation for a while. Looking forward to myself. It's been a pleasure. It's a pleasure being here. Awesome. Yeah. Well, maybe why don't we start with, can you just in, kind of introduce yourself, what you do for fun, uh, for living, for play, and then we'll we'll take the conversation from there. All right. Uh, start Started running in 1979 uh, through an accident. <laughs> I was actually a football, basketball, and baseball player. And I ran into a friend who uh, was a runner, lived one street over from me, and started running with him to get in shape for football for two days. And by the end of the summer, I was running him into the ground, and he convinced me that I was in the wrong sport. So he introduced me to a race director in my hometown in Sheffield Lake. That's where I grew up. I'm originally from Kansas City, Missouri. But uh, he introduced me to the race director and the cross-country coach from the high school, and uh, they convinced me to run the local Community Days 10K. So it was my first race. So I went up there. Um, never ran a 10K before. It was in July probably about 93, 94 degrees. And at the time, the best college in the state of Ohio for running was Malone University. They had a cross country team there. So I ran the 10K and uh, I think I was in like 35, 36 minutes. Beat all the runners except for the number one runner. The cross country coach from the high school was standing at the finish line and he convinced me to change sports. <laughs> I went in the following Monday to two a days. All my coaches from other sports were sitting there because they were all football coaches. I said, hate to tell you this, but I'm switching to cross country and track. That was back in 79, and I've been doing it ever since. So wow. it was a great move. Um, not only was it a great move for me there, but also in school, I enjoyed school. I had a lot of good, um, uh, what should I say, role models that were teachers and coaches, and that made me decide to become a teacher. And I've been a teacher for 32 years now and been running since 1979 so it all kind of played together wow that's cool so <laughs> since 1979 so in that time period one of the biggest things that i wanted to talk to you about because i think people will find this really interesting is uh tell us all how many how many races have you now done in your running career uh this past weekend i ran 944 uh, 943 and 944. next week it'll be 945 that'll be it, that'll be it for the year and uh, I was trying to get to a thousand before I turned 60 last October. I was on pace to do it, uh, but COVID messed that up. A lot of races were canceled. So now it's going to be hitting a thousand sometime next year. And at right now, um, 78 races this year is what I'll have for this year. Wow. What, um, what made you set this goal of a thousand races before 60? Uh, as what happened, um, I keep all my records for every every run I do. Okay, I have logs all the way back to 79. Um, I have a race log. One's in the computer, one's on paper in a notebook. I have every race I've run, the date, the name of the race, the distance, my time, my overall place, if I won the race, if I finished the top three, place in the age group, how many runners. I keep track of all that. And just about what, maybe February of last year, I was uh, didn't know how many races I ran. So I went in there and started counting. I'm like, wow, I'm almost to a thousand races, you know? And that's, I said, maybe I can do that before I turn 60 in October. Um, and then, like I said, COVID, COVID messed that up. So now it's what we're looking for next year. Wow. That's awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. I love asking this question for you. I think it'll be harder. I always ask people what their favorite running memory was, but in 944 races, you have a huge data oh, set. That you yeah, there's probably so many. Um, definitely my first Boston, probably. Uh, I qualified. What did I qualify with? I qualified with uh, sub three. I think just under three. As a matter of fact, I think it was 259.59 I qualified for. And back then, you had to run under three hours. So I went there my first Boston and ran a 255 something. Um, so that's probably one of my. Yeah, Boston. Yeah. Wow. Um, I've, run I've run three of them. Um, the one that really stands out too is the 100th, mm. and there I just ran around 310. Um, and then uh, I ran one other one, which was probably my worst one. It's weird because my first Boston, I'm running Boston, and I'm like, "Where is this Heartbreak Hill? There's supposed to be this giant hill. Where's Heartbreak Hill?" And the guy next to me, runner, says, "You already did it." And I'm so, I'm like, "No way. There's no yeah. way I ran. And there's no way I ran up Heartbreak Hill already because you already done it. It's all down here, you know, to the finish from here." I'm like, "Wow." 
So um, I went back uh, one year. We did back-to-back -back Bostons. And uh, the first year uh, was, you know, didn't fill a hill. Second year I went back, I felt every hill. And I ended up running like 314, 315. It was a struggle. You know, after 20 miles from Heartbreak Hill on, it was a struggle. It was like just getting to the finish line. So, but three Bostons were probably uh, the things that stick out the most. Um, one year at the International Peace Race, which is in Youngstown, Ohio, that'd be another one. It's a 25K, very hilly. Uh, back then, it was a very big international race. And um, I ran under an hour and a half. I don't remember exact time. I'd have to look it up. But is what I always remember. And I have the plaque hanging right over here to my right on the wall. I was third in the age group. But I was the third, first American in the age group. I got beat by a Russian athlete and a Polish athlete. Mm. So that's another one that always sticks out. And I, I remember that. I had um, the other thing, too, is I had 27 or 28 overall wins. So you remember those ones, too, because that doesn't happen too often. And I actually won one race this year. And I didn't think I'd win it. You know, you, you don't know who's going to show up when you sign up for a race. You don't know the size of it. You don't know what the quality of runners are going to be. And I didn't think I'd win it because there was too many high school kids there. And it was an out and back 5K. And I made the turnaround. I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'm in the lead and there's nobody by me. You know, where's these high school kids at? I thought for sure. So it's all about running running scared. I was doing it the whole time because I'm waiting for somebody to come up on me, especially these high school kids. And you right. know, like, wow, I'm down to like one mile to go and there's still nobody coming up on me, you know. Next thing I know, I finished. I'm like, wow, that's not bad. You know, 59 years old and just won a race. It doesn't that's a cool well. experience. Wow, that's yeah. really neat. Yeah. And that was just uh, recently in the fall. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, so you, you mentioned earlier, so 944 races, I've been doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, you're also, you know, working a very demanding job teaching. Yeah. Right. How do you... How do you do it? How do you how do you find time to train? What has been sort of your schedule over the years to still normally, do all these things and run? Yeah, normally it's what I try to do is um, as soon as I get home, you got to get it done as soon as you get home because if you don't, it doesn't happen. So I'll get home, get the stuff on, stretch, warm up, and get out there and do it. And typically because what I'll do is run the shorter miles during the week and then on the weekends when I have more time in the mornings, run the longer runs or, of course, races. seems like almost every weekend I'm racing Saturday and Sunday. Um, if not, then I'm doing longer runs. Uh, but you got to get, you know, you got to have that motivation that I got an hour left here in the job. I'm going to be going home. I got to think about getting home and getting it done. Because if it doesn't, you know, if you don't do that, it's not going to get done. Right. Um, and with me, sometimes in the summer, it's rough. So if I do something in the summer, you know, after work, it's pretty hot. Um, so sometimes I'll run in the morning, which makes it even difficult because now I'm talking about getting up at four in the morning. And that's just to get three, four or five miles in because that's all I can get in and get to work on time. So, yeah, it does get rough. Um, not like an elite, an elite athlete that, you know, gets up, runs, rest all day, runs, eats, you know, rest. And then the evening they do the third run. Um, yeah, it's, you gotta, it's a lot more difficult for us average runners. It's a lot the, more difficult. You know, yeah. You, and plus you got the family events and, you know, yes. so it is tougher. But you got to have that mindset. Hey, I'm in it to do it and I've got to get it done. So, Hey, what it takes is dedication. You know, you got that mindset. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, what type of, um, have there been any favorite running brands that you've experienced over years that have just been helpful to you in running? I've always well, been a, nutrition shoes, etc. I've always been a Nike guy. Okay. Uh, I like Nike the best. I mean, I have all kinds of shoes, different brands, Hoka, Saucony, New Balance, ASIC. But I've always liked Nike the best. Most of my clothing are Nike. Um, and the other thing I probably couldn't live up, live without uh, is my Garmin watch. I depend on that so much, you know, for pacing, um, listening to what it's telling me after runs, like for rest, uh, heartbeat, heart rate, um, calories. So that's probably that's probably the most important thing is my Garmin watch. And um, I've been through four or five of those since I've started using Garmin. Before the, you know, before the Garmin's and everything came out, you just had a regular stopwatch. You know, for many years, I used a, a, a Ironman triathlon watch. Mm. You know, you might get some splits on it, but that's it. And just the technology, the way it's changed from '79 to now. Um, back when I was younger and running low 16s for a 5K and 34 minute 10Ks, I wish I would have had the shoes we have today 
and the technology, because, you know, it would have been so much better. I mean, how much faster would I have been with carbon-plated shoes back then? A lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot probably. And to have the nutrition, we didn't have the nutrition back then, you know, that we have nowadays. And um, the technology, like the watches and stuff, they do so much more and tell you so much, so much more than, you know, a regular stopwatch does. So, yeah, technology has made a big difference for running over the years. What uh, what Garmin do you like to run with? Which model? I have the, what is that? Hold on one second here. Can you see me still? Yeah. Let me get up for a second. I always forget the uh, well. See that that's that's one thing. Garmin used to always put, they used to always put their numbers on the uh, watch. They okay. Don't do it no more. So this is the one I'm using. Um, I don't know if yeah, you can see it probably right there. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to think what that is, but I can't remember the photo off it. That's yeah. Um, I'll get it. You want to put it in the show notes later, but it yeah. might be the, the Vivio maybe. You know, I, I do. I can't remember, but it gives you so much information that a regular stopwatch doesn't do. And um, yeah. I can remember when I first had my first garment. I don't know if you remember the big square ones. They were probably about that big. Oh, yeah, I had like the original Forerunner. I mean, now yeah, they have four, that's, yeah, that's what I used to have. Forerunner. I went to. I went through two or three of them. Yeah, uh, the double A batteries in the back. Mm, no, see, that was before my time. Oh but, yeah, yeah. You used to have to put two double A batteries in there, um, and then. Uh, you could use the rechargeable or regular batteries. And as what happens, uh, is what happened with those, I went through three of them, not because the watches stopped working, but since you had to put the batteries in there, the little uh, things that would hook to the battery to, to get it to work, they would uh, fall apart. They would rust. Mm. And the watch wouldn't work anymore. But one thing I'll tell you, and for anybody that watches, is if you use Garmin, they have great support. Um, the first two, the first two garments I had, they quit working. I uh, emailed them, told them what happened to them. They said we're going to send you the uh, here's the address. Send in an envelope for us, just the Garmin watch. Keep the accessories, and we'll replace it for you. Wow. So I went through three of them and um, only paid for the first one. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. That is great customer service. Yeah, but uh, I haven't had any problems with uh, you know the ones that you can just recharge by hooking to your computer. Yeah. What uh what Nike shoes do you currently like to to run in? Uh, right now I'm running in the uh, Pegasus. Yeah. Uh, I also have uh, the Flies for racing. The next percent Flies. Um, well, let's do this here. What's, can you see that back there? Yeah, that that's that's quite a photo right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of running shoes. Uh, there. Yeah, it's probably too many for me to um, name all of them right now. I mean, when you're running that many races, you go through the shoes. That's that that was really neat. That was cool yeah, to see. Yeah, the one thing the one thing that um, I found out helps is never running the same shoes back to back. Mm. Rotate, rotate your shoes. Um, and with me having as many as I have, I rotate them more than one day, and it'll make them last longer. They dry it, you know, the insides dry, have a time to dry out and uh, it'll make the shoes last a long, long. Even if you only have two pairs, just rotate them. You'll see a difference and they'll last longer for you. Found that over the years. That's great advice. Definitely. Um, what about, I, I, I now I know for now for a couple years, um, we met a few years ago and you've right. been using our Peregrine products now for, um, for that time period. Can you talk a little bit more about your experience with uh, the different products, how you use them, um, and some things that you like about it? Yeah. Well, you use the multivitamin. I take everything first thing in the morning after I eat breakfast. So I take the multivitamin. Uh, I take the joint supplement. Started taking the fish oil because even though I'm a runner, I had high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and um, it was very high. Went from my last physical in the fall uh, back in November and using that fish oil and just watching salt intake, I've got it down to where I don't have to use medications. So that fish oil really helped. Uh, and then I use the um, protein powder, like I said, uh, for recovery after hard runs, after races and long runs. And I've never used any of these products. I've never used vitamins before and I couldn't believe the difference once I started uh, using the products and getting them in my system. It takes a little while, you know, it'll take you a while, a little, a little while to get them in your system where you start feeling the difference. Um, the one thing I noticed uh, once I had them in my system good enough was the recovery. And I used to have a lot of problems with joint pain, uh, 
especially uh, knees and Achilles, to the point where I might run one day and then have to take two or three days off because my Achilles need to recover. I don't have those problems anymore. Mm. Um, so I think that's a big thing that's helped um, with uh, my running. Um, just not having those aches and pains that I used to have uh, in the knees and in the Achilles uh, tendon. Um, and then again, with the, with the uh, fish oil, drop my cholesterol and blood pressure. Uh, and the vitamins, you know, take one of those vitamins because, you know, I looked at the stuff before I started taking it. I started looking at other products. You can't get a vitamin that matches what's in heroin. Mm -hmm. You can't. You can't. Uh, you can take two or three other vitamins and put them together, but why do you want to do that? So just the product itself and what it contains in it is so much better than anything you can buy. And like you said, it's what you told me. Uh, these are for runners. They're not for the average everyday person. Right. Yeah, runners needed them, not what uh, somebody that's laying on the couch all day needs. And that makes a big difference, you know, because it's hard to find uh, a vitamin out there after starting to research them, you know. You can't find one vitamin that's going to be just for a runner. And like I said, to get the things that are in Paraguay, you're going to have to go out and get a couple of different vitamins. And then again, what they provide for you doesn't match. It doesn't match. It doesn't add up. So those are probably the biggest things for me. Well said. Awesome. <laughs> um, well, hey, last question here, and then okay. I'll let you go. But um, I have to ask you because uh, you are – one of the more experienced runners that we have in our community with 944 races uh, looking forward to hearing about number 1000 coming up in 2023 which will be yeah. super exciting um yeah. but um let's say someone that's just starting out who's looking yeah. to do race number one or maybe right. race number 10. right any advice you would give to that person that maybe um has never ran before or maybe ran when they were in high school and they're looking to get back into it now. Um, right. Any advice that you would give to someone to get them, to get them going? First, probably the most important thing is listen to your body. Your body will tell you if you need a rest, you know, and if you need a rest, take it. Don't be afraid to take a rest. You got to have time to recover. Um, if you're just beginning out and you've never done it before, or it's been a long time, don't be afraid to run and walk. Um, there's nothing wrong with walking. It's a good way to, you know, come back to the sport by walking and running. Pick out a certain distance and say, hey, I'm going to run to this distance and I'm going to walk to the next distance and back and forth and very, you know, gradually build over that. Um, but start with the distance you feel comfortable with. Um, not a, no, don't be afraid to walk if you have to. Um, probably the most important thing, too, is make sure you have a good pair of shoes. You can run in anything, but shoes are probably the number one important thing you need to have is make sure you get a good pair of shoes. Um, you got to have that. If you don't, you're going to end with injuries. <laughs> um, don't be afraid to go to a foot store, uh, not a foot store, but a running store and have them actually measure you and fit you with the proper shoe too, because that's important. Um, some people can run in any kind of shoe. There's other people, they have to have a certain type of shoe. A good running store, they can do that for you. They can tell you what you need. Um, and then get plenty of rest. Rest is important. Um, whether it's getting enough sleep or rest in between runs. Sometimes I take two or three days off. Some days I wait and take the day off seven days later. But I let my body tell me when I need a rest. I don't say I'm taking a rest on this day. I'm taking a rest on this day. I go by how my body feels. And I think that's what's kept me from getting injuries. Over all those years, I've only had two injuries. Um, one was when I was in college, and it was a tibial band. Um, they kept me out for quite a while, and then probably it must have been about, mm, let's say, six, seven years ago, I pulled a hamstring. And I was out on a training run in the winter. I was almost done. I was about a mile away from home. I pulled my hamstring, and that was bad. I was out probably for about seven, eight months. But other than that, I've been really, really lucky um, with injuries, and I think that's because I, I listened to my body. You know, I, I listened to it, and let that let my body determine when I need those rest breaks. And that's one thing you want to do, especially if you're getting into uh, the sport of running. You've got to listen to your body. Well said. Well, Bill, <laughs> thank you for your time. As always, it's a pleasure to uh, to talk with pleasure. you. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. Yep. It's always good to see you. All right. Take care, Bill. Yeah. All right, you too.